Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recreational programming session with Azusim, of course. So today we're going to continue working on Musializer, which is a music visualizer that we've been working uh, on for quite some time. And uh, I'm going to put the link to the source code in the description. So uh, let me show you how it looks like. So it's pretty straightforward, right? So what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to start it up. And as you can see, it prompts you to drag and drop some music. Uh, what you do, you just go ahead and drag and drop some music. Uh, it's a little bit loud, so let me, let me make it a little bit uh, quieter. And uh, it starts visualizing the, the music that you drag and dropped. Uh, and then you can press F and it will start actually rendering the video and actually visualizing this entire thing. Uh, right. So, and essentially recently on the previous stream, on the previous session specifically, we added support for several files, right? So as you can see, there is a sort of like a square down there. Uh, and that's basically what it is, right? So now you can actually drag and drop several files and it will remember all of them and you'll be able to switch between them. Uh, right and like basically pick which file you want to work with and which file you want to visualize essentially so uh, as you can see right now this UI in a very rudimentary state and one of the things I want you to do today is I want you to make it a little bit better make it look a little bit more professional you know what I'm talking about uh, right so this is sort of like a sketch like a rough outline of the UI and also, um, this is also refactoring because the, the, the Musializer before couldn't work with several files, right? To ju just to be able to have this panel, we had to uh, refactor a little bit of the logic of the application itself, right? So it was a little bit of an effort. So um, I was thinking about how one, I want to organize the UI generally, and I came to a conclusion that I don't really want this panel to be at the bottom. I actually want it to be on the side, right? So maybe we're going to start on the left. Uh, maybe in the future there will be possibility to customize it, to snap it to the right. But for now, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it on the left, right? So which will enable us to add something at the bottom uh, to control the, the, the visualizer. For example, we could put some sort of like a... Uh, slider that shows the progress of the music playing so it will also allow you to maybe uh, jump to different timestamps within the music and stuff like that so we'll see we'll see so that's basically what i want you to do today today i want you to make this ui a little bit better right because right now it's kind of it's not even clear like what that's supposed to mean it just looks weird uh, if you know what I mean, right? So it just looks a little bit weird. So, uh, by the way, on top of uh, this panel, we uh, also implemented a scrolling, right? So if we put a lot of files in here, as you can see, they do not all fit into the panel. So you are able to actually scroll, uh, right? It works relatively well. I really like how it looks like, um, right? So let's try to put this thing on the side, right? So uh, let me go to the uh, plug that's in. And let's find where we render the tracks panel, right? So uh, I renamed the the samples, the samples to track, right? So because the, the word sample is actually very much overloaded in the sound programming in general, right? It means all sorts of things. So uh, I decided to come to, I decided to go with a more like specific name. So this is a track. So we are working with tracks now. So and the panel that we have at the bottom is the tracks panel, right? So it's a separate function that accepts a rectangle, which is a boundary, uh, right? And somewhere down there, we actually sort of like a compute uh, that boundary and set it at the bottom. So what we need to do probably is to change that boundary. So now we have a panel height, right? So we have a panel height. What if I change it to panel width, right? So this is a panel width now and I subtract panel uh, height from the height of the whole window. So preview boundary is this thing. So this is the preview. So in the pre preview boundary is basically a rectangle of that. So now what we should do, essentially, we should probably offset uh, preview boundary uh, by that panel width, right? And we should subtract the width of the whole thing by that, uh, right? And essentially, so I'm going to just keep it like this. If I try to recompile this entire stuff, uh, right, hopefully it will recompile. Uh, yeah, as you can see, now we have like a little bit of a space in here, but we don't have a panel there because we didn't update the, the rectangle of the panel. 
So it's gonna start at zero and Y is gonna be, I suppose, also zero. Width is gonna be the panel width, uh, panel width. And the height is gonna be the height of the preview boundary, right? So this is gonna be like this. Uh, and that way, uh, we're gonna actually keep this entire thing on the side, on the left side. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so it is technically correct. It is technically correct. It's just like, uh, yeah, before we didn't really have to uh, care about sort of cutting out things that go outside. Now we do have to care. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. Uh, let me go ahead and just like put some scissors mode, I suppose. So in, in Rayleigh, there is a thing called begin uh, scissors, right? So, and essentially with this thing, uh, you're able to specify the rectangle and it will basically cut off everything outside of that rectangle. They're pretty useful actually. Uh, right, so in here we have a panel boundary, so we should be able to do something like panel boundary X, panel boundary uh, Y, and then panel boundary width, uh, right, and the height. So just a second, panel boundary height. So there you go, uh, then after, after we're done, we do end scissor mode, like so. And if we recompile this entire thing, uh, there we go, so it actually cut it out. Right, so, yeah. Uh, so, the, the, uh, basically the rectangles that present the files themselves are rather big, so that's why we can't see too much. To, to be fair, this sort of like a side panel is a little bit small, I would like to make it a little bit bigger probably. Uh, right, so let's try to make it a little bit bigger. Tracks, uh, where is the tracks panel? <clears throat> uh, and so it's it's basically that. What if, what about like this? Actually, we're taking a quarter of the height. Since it's a side panel now, we have to take a quarter of the width. So that's why it's so small. It doesn't make any sense. There we go. Now we're talking. And it also updates according to, to the width, not the height. Uh, right, so that's that's way better. So let's actually confirm that it's still working. So I can still switch between them, even though they're huge. That's, but that's fine. That's totally fine. So uh, since this thing is on the side, right? What I'm thinking about is that maybe we should orient uh, all of these things vertically rather than horizontally, right? So th that would make sense. So, and it would look like a classical... I don't know, it, it, with this side panel, it will look like a classical music UI, right? So where you have a main window and then on the side you have some sort of like catalog or library of the things that you're working with. So, yeah, I, th I think we can go with that paradigm, right? I think we can go with that paradigm. So let me let me see what we can do in here. So how we're gonna orient this entire stuff. So tracks panel. So this is a panel boundary. Uh, so we take the panel height, right? So we take the panel height, and what do we use panel height as? Um, so we create a separate variable for panel height within the tracks panel, and we primarily use this thing as basically. Uh, item size of the panel. So maybe it would make sense to rename this thing to just item size, right? So it's, it's just basically depending on the rotation, it's going to be different, right? So if we oriented it horizontally, it makes sense to use height as the size of the file. If we're going to orient it vertically, it would make sense to actually take width of the panel as the, uh, as the item size. So I think that would make sense. So let me quickly go and uh, refactor this entire stuff. So might as well just quickly query replace this thing. Actually, not this thing. Uh, panel height with item size and see how it's gonna go. Yeah, so that makes sense. Uh, we didn't break anything, so everything seems to be okay. Everything seems to be in order. Uh, okay, so if I now just basically switch this entire thing to the width, uh, it's gonna look very interesting. Yeah, there we go. So this is how it looks like. <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. Uh, okay, so that's pretty cool. So what we need to do now is orient it vertically. 
uh, but it's not as easy as you might think because when we're referring to panel uh, boundary width, boundary width, we're using panel boundary width um, as a way to compute uh, scrolling area. So it's very important in here. So yeah, so there is a parameter max scroll, right? So it's basically how much you can scroll to the right uh, before it stops. And this is essentially the amount of tracks multiplied by the item size, which is basically the whole width of the whole thing that you're scrolling. Uh, right, and we're subtracting the sort of like a window from which we are subtracting. So if we're going to be reorienting it vertically, this entire thing should become height. Uh, but do we use the panel boundary width anywhere else? Okay, so we use it for scissors, but that's about it. Uh, right, so it would be better to maybe factor it out to something like uh, area size or something. So it's basically the scrollable area within which we're doing all of that. So if we're orienting horizontally, it's going to be width, but if we're orienting uh, vertically, it's going to be height. Right. So in essential, maybe in the future, we can factor out uh, all of the scrollable area logic into something else and that something else is going to have a flag that allows you to orient horizontally or vertically or something like that. Uh, right. I'm hard coding a lot of things in here. But it's important to keep in mind that all of the stuff that I'm implementing here in hard coding can be factored out and reused somewhere else, right? I intentionally hard code all of that so we can see what kind of useful stuff I can then factor out. So does it make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so what do we have in here? Uh, nothing changed particularly, right? So now it doesn't scroll to to its fullest because the area scrolling area is completely different, right? So now. What we have to do, we have to just organize our item boundaries differently, right? So we have to organize item boundaries differently. So let me try to quickly do that. So this one is going to be interesting. Uh, all right. So this is going to be and if and uh, here, uh, this is going to be a rectangle item boundary. Uh, this is an item boundary. Oh my god, Emacs, could you just not do this kind of stuff? Thank you so much. So in terms of X, X is going to be basically the same all the time, right? So, and I would even say it's basically the same as uh, horizontally. It's just like you swap out X and Y and width and height. So that's basically it. All right, but uh, after swapping out, you have to also swap out this thing to Y. Uh, right, and this thing to X, right, and you also have to swap out width and height, but there is the same, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, right, so what do we have here? There we go. So now we, we have this thing actually oriented uh, vertically. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I really like that. So, uh, so we can switch between them and stuff like that, so it's, it's now vertical. Uh, right, so we can also try to maybe, um, you know, leave some space at the bottom just to see how it's going to look like. I think that will be interesting, actually. Uh, so let me let me give it a try. So let's go to, to here. Um, right, so this is going to be tracks panel. Uh, so we have a panel width. So this is... Uh, I would like to maybe specify what it is uh, exactly maybe tracks panel width uh, is it going to be too much right so tracks panel width tracks uh, panel width and uh, yeah so this is basically tracks panel panel width let me try to recompile this entire stuff uh, okay cool um, so what else do I want uh, one of the things I want to maybe introduce is uh, bottom uh, panel height, which is going to be uh, the quarter of the of the height of the whole window, and we're going to subtract um, that from the height of the preview boundary. So this is going to be basically bottom uh, panel height. So the pre boundary. To be fair, we could have just subtract that from the preview boundary. And since the track panel is sort of 
snapped to the height of the preview, it's gonna up be updated automatically, so we don't even have to worry about that stuff at all. Uh, right, so this is gonna be that. Um, and might as well assign specific names to the specific fields. All right, so we're modifying that stuff. Uh, right, let me see. So, and what else do we have? So bottom panel height is defined somewhere here. So we might as well want to put it somewhere here. Uh, right, let's see what's gonna happen. Uh, there we go. So yeah, that's basically what I want you to see, right? So, and here at the bottom, we may have something that controls the music some way. So I think it's too big, actually. It feels a little big. What about like 20? Let's make it 20. Uh, yeah, around something like that. So we can even uh, draw something in here, right? So let me make it smaller. So this is going to be draw rectangle rec. And the specific rectangle is going to be something like this. So X uh, is going to start at zero, obviously, right? So this is basically zero. In terms of Y, it is going to be the height of the preview, uh, right? So the preview height. So this is where it starts. Width is the width of the whole screen and the height is basically bottom panel height. We already sort of predefined all of that. And let's make it red so we can instantly see this entire thing, though it doesn't really have to be red. So it's just for debugging purposes. There we go. So we can put something in there, right? So we can put something at the bottom, some sort of a control uh, thingy. Uh, I don't even know what exactly we can put in there. Uh, we can put some sort of like a vertical bar uh, that basically shows where the song is currently playing. Right, so and as far as I know, in uh, Rayleap, you can actually get that information, right? So let's go to SRC. So somewhere Rayleap, Rayleap, SRC, Rayleap, uh, Rayleap.h, that's what I want. So let me find the music API. So there is a load music and everything related to load music is located somewhere here. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. So basically get music time length and get music time plate. Right, so you know how long the music is specifically in seconds, right? So, and then uh, like where exactly you are. Uh, so as far as now, another thing you can do, you can even seek. Yeah, so you can seek the music. I uh, can't, can't really do, uh, see. Yeah, the, you, you can seek the music to a position also in seconds, right? We need these three functions uh, to be able to maybe uh, display and control things. So let's actually try to display uh, thing first, right? So let's try to display this entire thing uh, and see how it's gonna go. So let me see. And here we're gonna have something like uh, length, uh, right? So and the music that we're playing is located in the track. So this is the music. Uh, and so the track is available, right? So if track was not available, we would not be inside of this condition. So that's totally fine. I don't even have to worry about this thing not being available. Uh, so this is the length and this is played. Uh, this is the length and this is played. And essentially, we can find the proportion by just taking the plate and divided by len. And we're going to get the value from uh, 0 to 1 which we can then multiply by the width of the window and we will know exact location where to put this entire thing. It should be as simple as that. We can even do something like width. And there you go. So this is basically where you can put uh, the line, right? Where you can put the line. So there should be a function draw line, uh, right? But as far as I know, draw line does not allow you to specify the thickness, right? It would be nice to have something like EX. Uh, which does in fact allow you to specify the thickness. Okay, so that's very useful. Uh, let's put this thing in here. So the start position is going to be, uh, we can specify it like that. So it's going to be vector two start position. Uh, this is the start position and X is going to be X, but Y is going to be the Y of this thing. So let me quickly uh, factor this thing out. Let's just factor it out and call it something like bottom panel boundary, right? 
bottom uh, panel boundary uh, like so so then later we can do bottom panel um, boundary uh, essentially y right um, and that is basically it except we also need to have end position uh, right which is very much similar except y add height you probably can't see that but yeah you should be able to see it now so i might as well maybe put stuff like this uh there we go so that's a little bit better so we have a start position end position and so on and so forth right so now we just draw a line end position thickness let's set thickness to 10 and this entire thing to red uh, we don't really need that stuff anymore and that should automatically basically display um so the current position within the music somewhere down there we'll see if, it, if it's gonna work out so let's go through the rest of the stuff if i forgot to put semicolons in different places that's fine that's why we have compiler uh and there we go so this is a very long song so if we have something shorter there we go it's, it's even moving okay so <laughs> we have something like even shorter okay so and after it reaches the end it should actually go over because the music is looping it's actually very convenient believe it or not okay so <laughs> we can pause and it also stops right okay so since we're taking the actual location of, uh, of the music from the Rayleap API, all of that is actually synchronized with the music playing. So this is very convenient. I really like that. Uh, right. <laughs> so now we can probably try to handle like clicks in here, right? So, and then depending on where you click, we can just set the music position there and we'll be able to even scroll through that. You, you know what would be even useful? Um, to have two pointers to the left and to the right and specify the segment the segment that you want to actually uh visualize instead of the whole thing maybe maybe you want to visualize the segment. that is very you th that is absolutely useful right because we're going to support recording from the mic or recording from the speaker or from the system sounds obviously you're not going to record it perfectly you're not going to record it perfectly. Maybe you you will want to, after recording, cut out the beginning and the end to, to make it like sound all right or maybe to, to loop it properly. And that's definitely something that you will need, uh, right? And to be able to like effectively cut out things, you probably also want to be able to see the sound wave. So this is something that we'll have to implement at some point. Yeah, that's... I don't want to implement it right now, right? So, because I'm focusing on AI, but this is something that could be useful in the future. This is something that could be useful in the future. Um, so, uh, I think we need to add some sort of like to do in here. To do, um, allow, uh, enable the user to um, cut out the sample. Um, to render, a specific a specific region instead of the uh of the whole song right also uh visualize uh sound wave on the um progress bar i'm not sure how to call that thing properly uh right so i'm gonna call it progress bar or it's not really progress bar right it's on the timeline maybe we should call it timeline uh on the timeline uh is, is that a good name for this thing i think timeline is a is a good name right so right right now i'm calling bottom panel because i didn't come up with a better name for that so but maybe i should call it actually like a timeline right so timeline uh boundary timeline height and so on and so forth that would make a lot of sense so might as well just query replace this entire thing super quick uh right query replace bottom panel uh timeline uh boom 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 
like timeline boundary. And that will allow me to maybe factor this thing out into separate function similar to tracks panel, uh, right? So, and only accept the, the boundary like so. Uh, that would make sense actually. So let me quickly do that. So I'm gonna copy paste this entire thing. Uh, right, so let's go to tracks panel. I wanna define this function somewhere nearby there. Uh, let's keep playing the music. There we go. Timeline, uh, and we're gonna just copy paste this entire stuff in here. Uh, boom. So a timeline boundary is gonna be a rectangle that we basically put in here. Uh, but now what we have to do, we just have to do it like that. Timeline, right? And let's just grab this thing. Literal uh, rectangle. Boom. There we go. So now we should be able to get rid of all of this stuff and we're slowly turning that into sort of like a UI. Right, there we go. So as you can see, we have a preview boundary. I'm not really sure what I'm, why am I defining it like that, but that's rather useful. Yeah, there we go. So we're rendering the preview itself. FFT render is basically preview. Uh, then we have a tracks panel and we have a timeline and so on and so forth. And that allows us to yeah, to separate concerns and stuff like that. So now I can handle all of the sort of like a user input from there. Right, so where is the timeline? Uh, right, so how can we even do all of that? How can we even do all of that? So first of all, we probably want to check. Uh, we probably want to check that the mouse is within uh, the boundary, right? So there is a function called check collision uh, collision point rectangle right so and this specific function accepts the point and the rectangle but we need to have a point uh, so this is going to be vector 2 uh, mouse uh, vector 2 mouse get mouse position right so we take the mouse position we provide the mouse and we compare it to the boundary if we are inside of the boundary we can finally check for, for example for the mouse click uh, right if is mouse button um, let's say released right if maybe let's say pressed right so for mouse for this specific case I think pressed would make a little bit more sense specifically mouse button uh, left so what we have to do now we have to take the mouse position X and uh, basically find where it is located on the timeline uh, so first of all, we probably want to subtract the timeline boundary X, right, to make it from zero to the width uh, of the timeline. And then we can divide all of that stuff by the timeline width and we get the value, we get the value from zero to one, right? So which we can then remap to the length of the music, right? So this is going to be some sort of interpolator. Uh, and then we multiply that thing by the length and we got the position to which we, we have to jump in the music, right? So we have to use the function um, seek music stream, there we go. So that's what we have to do. Um, unfortunately, we don't have an access to the current track, or do we? Um, this one is very interesting. So we don't have an access to the current track. Uh, we might as well accept that track yeah so we already refer to this track uh, in these specific places so i think we have to accept that track so i think that's important so we're going to accept it in here so then we provide just a track music and we just set in that uh, position in here and that should be enough so let's go through the compilation errors as usual so what do we have in here width it's a you know get render width that's what it is. So timeline, um, so we have to specify the current track. It's super easy because we already have it. So that's the current track. And there we go. Uh, now. Okay. <laughs> so I can actually jump between this thing and stuff like that. <laughs> that was easy. That's actually pretty useful. Uh, hmm. And this is something that I definitely need for quite some time. So, yeah. Alright. So, um, 
another interesting thing I would like to have is I would like to make this thing, uh, these particular items narrower. Right, sort of turn this into a list. Right, so I don't think like making them square is particularly useful. I want this to look like a catalog of files. Uh, right, and because of that, making this height so huge is not particularly useful, I think. So uh, let's try to, to fix that a little bit. So item size uh, is basically the width, right? So that's the width, uh, but I think it has to be slightly different. Okay, so this one is not needed anymore. I don't know why I did it like that. Um, so item boundary. <clears throat> so I think the height should be item size. But the width, the width should be always the panel boundary width minus the padding, of course, right? So it's not going to change really anything, but it will allow us to change the item size to uh, something like this, maybe like half of what we have in here. Can we do... Yeah, there we go. So... That's very useful, I think. Uh, right, so... And... Uh, yeah, that, that's fine, I guess. It basically adapts to the width. So I think we can work with that. Um, a bit weird, not gonna lie, but maybe... Maybe that's fine. Okay, so... It does look like a catalog already. It does, in fact, look like a catalog. So, tracks panel. Uh, tracks panel. So maybe I'm gonna make it even narrower. What about the quarter of the width? Right, what about the quarter? That's already better. Uh, maybe even 20%. What about that? Maybe even 20%. Uh, so they all fit in there. They're already all fit in there, which is nice. So, yeah. And maybe we can even display the file paths uh, right in them. Uh, so I want you to have some sort of a tooltip where I just hover over this entire thing and it will show me the path. But if it's a, like a narrow thing, I might as well just put the text on them. Right, you can put the text on them. That probably would make sense, so let's actually give it a try. Uh, so how do I draw the text? So this is the item boundary, so we... Uh, so here we just check different states and stuff like that, but the end, uh, at the end of uh, the day it's just like a rectangle. Uh, we're still gonna draw the rectangle. Uh, right, so we need to draw the text on top of that rectangle. So this is gonna be text XC. And uh, let me take a look at what kind of parameters do we accept in here. Uh, that's a lot of parameters, so let me actually make it visible in here. So font, we're gonna be using the font the font from uh, like a global font that we use, Allegria. The text we're gonna put in there, uh, I suppose, I suppose the text is going to be, uh, the text is going to be the file path of the track. So what we have to do, we have to take the track, we have to take the track and uh, just take the file path of this entire thing. Uh, right, just take the file path. So, what's going to be the position? Uh, this is very interesting. So, position is going to be... Basically, we can adjust it, right? So, we can adjust it, but for, for now, I'm going to just set it to item boundary. Uh, simply to the item boundary. So, it's going to be Y, and there we go. So, the font size... Um, I'm not sure what kind of font size I want to have in here, so I'm going to put 20. Uh, right, spacing is going to be zero and tint is going to be just white, right, so nothing, nothing particularly special, so we're going to just dis display file paths. Um, okay, so what do we have in here? Okay, so this looks horrendous, right, so... <laughs> uh, this is because, yeah, we're displaying fonts... So if I remember correctly, Rayleap just renders the atlas of the fonts with a specified size, and that is basically it. So that's everything it does. Uh, so if we want to have like a smooth phone that like looks nice at any sort of resolution, we probably want to do SDF, right? And as far as I know, 
uh, Rayleap allows you to do SDF. Uh, so let me see. So yeah, okay. So you, you, you need to use SDF, but I don't really remember how to use SDF. Uh, so uh, let me see. So there, there should be some sort of examples. So do we have examples? Uh, okay, so I actually removed all of the examples. So maybe I'm gonna go to Rayleap in here. So here I do have examples. Uh, let me grab uh, SDF. So what do we have in here? Uh, okay, so there is literal example text font SDF. Uh, right, so font SDF. And how do you use all of that? Oof. Um, so yeah, you, you can't just load the font. You have to construct the font from scratch, populating each individual field yourself. And then you're generating font atlas. Yeah, okay, this is interesting. Um, is that the only way to do that? That's, that's kind of weird. Um, so I think I'm going to do that a little bit later. So for now, I'm going to just focus on making it look all right. But we already can kind of see. So this is the full path. It would be nice to display only the file name. Uh, I wonder if... Um, Rayleap has something for file names. Uh, oh, okay, so it does get file name. <laughs> All right, so that means I should be able to in like go here and just say, okay, get file name. Just get the file name. Uh, and this is not what I want. I want to rebuild my project. Thank you very much. Uh, right, so. There we go. Okay, so it's kind of difficult to see because they're so small, but I mean, it displays only the files that we copy pasted in there. So this is 20. Let's make it make it 30 uh, and see how it's going to go. So this is 30. Okay, so look at that. Right, so this is cool. Um, so what else do we have in here? Point of no return. That's a lot of them. So let's actually copy paste this thing. Yeah, there we go. So that seems to be working. Uh, so the scrolling is a little bit slow. I would like to make it maybe a little bit faster. Uh, let me let me see. Okay. Uh, tracks tracks panel. Uh, right tracks panel. So where is the scrolling? So let's actually make it like five. It would be also nice to have some sort of like a scroll bar, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, so six, maybe even something like eight. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a little better, so it goes a little bit faster. Uh, so some sort of a scroll bar would be nice, just to be able to see like how many things you have in here. That already looks so nice, look at that! Uh, right? <laughs> so let's actually try to center the text. Uh, so, okay, so there is like, when they overflow, yeah, they don't really look particularly nice because of the... yeah. So we need to do a little bit of a scissors inside of these things as well. Uh, right, so let's go here. Uh, all right, so th this entire thing becomes more and more professional. Like, holy shit, what the fuck? Um, so tracks panel, so there was a, some sort of a padding. Uh, what if I make padding like slightly bigger, just like a tiny bit bigger? Is that better? I'm not really sure, but we'll see. Maybe it has to be smaller. Uh, on the contrary. Uh, maybe something like this is better. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. All of that can be corrected at any point, of course. Uh, okay, so let's try to, um, you know, center it vertically, right? So the most impossible task on the web, right? To center things vertically. Uh, we're going to do that quite easily in C. We're going to do that quite easily in C. So to do that, we need to measure the text, right? So uh, might as well factor out text that we're rendering to something else. So here is the text. And uh, essentially, we have a function measure, uh, measure text. So what else do we have in here? I think we need to have XC version. Right, because it has all the same parameters as the draw text XZ. Uh, so we provide the font, the text, the font size. Let's actually factor out the font size as well, because we're going to be using it for both of the functions in here. Right, so this is basically the font size. 
uh, and the spacing is zero in both of them. I don't really care about the spacing. So what it should return is the size of the whole thing. So and essentially, uh, in terms of why, we can move this entire thing by half of the height of the item boundary, right? So we take the height of the item boundary, uh, right? So and we add half of it, but then we can subtract half of the height of the whole thing, of the whole text, right? So we can pick Y, uh, multiply by half, and there we go. We basically centered this entire thing. Uh, there we go, and all of that is centered. How difficult it is in web, I don't even know. Mm. So another thing we can do in here, another thing we can do uh, is essentially maybe add a little bit of a panel padding in here. So panel padding. Uh, right, so move it to the right a little bit, so it's padded on the left as well. Uh, so it doesn't look that horrendous as it is right now. Uh, yep, maybe it could be... Uh, maybe it could be its own padding, right? So, you know, text padding. Right, so let's put it like this. Text padding, and uh, what is it going to be? Uh, so panel padding. You know, we can just take the... Um, what is it called item boundary item boundary width and multiply it by you know tenth right so something like this and that should that's that's a huge padding right so maybe something like this even uh right so something like this is a little bit better um so it would be nice to cut off some of those things um also funny enough the um, the text font does not depend on anything maybe it should uh, we could take uh, we could take take the height of the item boundary height uh, and multiply it by half right so it depends on the height uh, right now right depends on how we yeah is that better i don't know Huh. But it looks fixated now, kind of. Huh. So I don't know if the encoding right now is horrendous, but it seems to be working. Right. And the font looks bad, but it's not that bad, right? So it could be worse. So, but it would be nice to use the SDF fonts anyway, right? It would be nice to use SDF fonts. Uh, so. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Alright. Uh, okay. So that's pretty cool. Already looks nice. Look, look at that. Huh. Um, so. What else can we do? What else can we do? Uh, let me, let me see. So what if we try to do a little bit of a scissors um, inside of each individual item? Can I do scissor mod in a nested way? Right. So for example, I did this thing in here and then inside I could do something like, uh, like this, where instead of panel boundary, uh, I can have item boundary, right? And then at the end, somewhere here, we could end uh, the scissors mode. Can I do some? It doesn't really work the way I want because I forgot the semicolon. Uh, I, I guess not. Uh, <laughs> Why is this like that? <laughs> Uh, I guess I can't do that, so it, I cannot nest it, right? So I suppose it calls to GL scissors, right? So because that's how GL scissors work. GL scissors, right? So they work in a very similar manner. Um, so you specify the rectangle and it just cuts that rectangle. Yeah, there we go. So it's, it's literally that. So, and I thought since it has this sort of like operational bracket paradigm where you have begin and end, I thought that maybe you can nest it um, somehow. So we can take a look at the implementation. 
All right, so it enables the Caesar test, and it, it just calls to RL Caesars, which basically calls to GL Caesars. So I don't see what's the problem in here. Like, well, I mean, yeah, so, oh, okay. All right, so essentially it does not organize the stack. It's kind of a little bit weird, uh, all right. I really would expect this thing to has its own sort of like a scissor stack um, because it has begin and end, like why? And also it flashes the render batch, so yeah, you probably don't want to use it this way. You probably, you definitely don't want to use it this way because like you're gonna be flashing yeah, flushing the uh, the batch render every time you use scissors. So imagine flushing the output on each individual text in here. So I don't think it's a good idea, generally. Right. So I probably don't want to do it like that. So let me do it like this. Um, I'll, I'll think about that. Right. So I'll think how we can cut out the texts. Uh, right. So let me see. So it should be it should be not that difficult. Uh, cut out overflown text, right? So this is something that would be useful. Uh, this is something that would be useful. Another thing I would like to have is to probably use SDF fonts, right? Use SDF fonts. Uh, and a yesu, a yesu, a yesu. All right, so I would like to maybe make a small break and uh, refill my cup of tea, All right? And after the small break, I would like to finish maybe, I would like to add a scroll bar. I think scroll bar in here would have been rather useful, All right? So for at least visualizing, I'm not sure if I want to make this scroll bar, bar interactable. Uh, in in a sense that like you basically hold it and drag it down, uh, but at least I wanted to have it just to see uh, right how many elements I have in here because right now it's not obvious like how much stuff I have in here. All right, so let's make some break and um... all right, I'm back. Uh, so let's continue. Let's now uh, implement a very simple scroll bar for this entire scrollable area. Let me see how we can approach this think so first of all maybe we could have uh, a scroll um, bar width right so we definitely need some sort of a scroll bar width and it's going to be relative to the uh, boundary well, the, the panel boundary width at all uh, right so let's multiply this maybe by 10 right and we'll see how it goes so it's definitely going to be smaller than that right it has to be very much narrow um, so, and the way we're gonna approach this entire thing um, is rather interesting. Uh, it's, I don't even know how we can approach that. So, essentially, uh, we can do that on the level of an item boundary, I think. I think on the level of an item boundary is gonna be fine. So, minus uh, scroll, I can't see scheisse, scroll uh, bar width right so let's actually subtract a little bit from the right and there we go so th that's a lot as you can see that's a lot uh we could have as well uh indicate that sort of like an area with uh, a red square red uh, red, red rectangle so let me see um, so this is going to be a rectangle scroll bar boundary uh, and essentially in terms of x it's going to be um, um, panel boundary x plus panel boundary width but minus uh, scroll bar width right so we just like subtract a notch in here right like that a y is going to be panel uh, panel boundary y uh, width we already know it's a scroll bar width it's gonna be like that and height is going to be equal uh, straight up to the height of the panel boundary right so it has to be a height uh, panel boundary height there we go so and after that we should be able to do something like draw uh, rectangle rect uh, scroll boundary Scroll bar boundary, so it's going to be red. 
There we go. So let me see. There we go. It's a little bit thick. It is, in fact, a little bit on the thicker side. So we probably need to make it a little bit narrower. Uh, maybe half of what we already have. Uh, something like half would be nice. Maybe even smaller. Uh, right. So I think it must be a little bit smaller than that. So maybe even 3%. Okay. So this is fine. This is more or less fine. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now let me see uh, how we can approach this entire stuff. So essentially, essentially, in terms of X, we can just append the scroll offset in there. Right, so we can just append scroll offset in here and it should be fine. So can we just use panel scroll? If I understand correctly panel scroll, it is straight up offset in pixels right so we use it in a context of pixels so that should be fine um so i should be able to just like add scroll panel scroll to that and that essentially gives me things did i i think i forgot to yeah there we go uh so oh it's okay i'm adding x i should actually add y <laughs> right God damn it. Uh, that explains everything. Uh, all right. There we go. Look at that. But it actually goes down. So uh, you don't really see what is going on. But if we cut out the scissors, right, if we cut out the scissors, it will be kind of obvious what is going on, I think. Uh, let me let me see. So, yeah, as you can see, it just like goes over that. But it has the same sort of width as the as the boundary. Right, so it's not width, but height. Its height should be relative to what is visible, right? Its height should represent the visible area and how that visible area moves through the entirety, through the entire scrollable area, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So essentially, um, the relationship between the scroll bar and the whole height is the same as the relationship between the visible area and the actual entire area, right? So scroll bar sort of uh, represents the visible area. It's sort of like a mini map in some sense. It's sort of like a mini map and that's what it should represent. Uh, right, so let me, let me bring back the scissors, right? Let me bring back the scissors. So, and uh, the visible area, if I remember correctly, we denote the visible area by the name um, area size. So this is the area size, it's the visible area. The entire scrollable area is this. It doesn't really have a name, but it's basically the amount of items multiplied by the size of the items, which does in fact make sense. So this is the entire area, uh, right? So what we can do, there are, two, there are at least two situations when the entire area, when the entire area is bigger than the scrollable area. Um, in that case, we just display everything proportionally. Uh, when the entire area is smaller than the visible area, I think in that case, we can just snap the size of the scroll bar to the size of the whole height, or we can just not display it. Which is something that a lot of UI programs do, don't they? I think that's basically how it works usually with UI. If there is nothing to scroll, let's not even show the scrollable area, right? Um, so maybe I should rename this to, um, you know, visible area size. So that probably makes sense. Um, visible area size, and this is. Uh, this is entire scrollable area, right? So entire scrollable area. Entire scrollable area equal to that. Okay, so let me see how we can approach that. So where is the scroll bar? If uh, entire scrollable area is bigger than the visible area, only then we're showing the scroll bar only then we're showing the scroll bar. Otherwise, we do not really show it. We can try to test this entire thing. Right, right now, it's kind of difficult to test. At least it's, you know, showing, but we need to restart it. Uh, right, so we need to restart the application and uh, drag and drop something the, like this. 
Okay, so we can clearly see that there's no bar in here. So we can drag and drop more things in here. So we still don't have the scroll bar. So let's actually add more. Uh, right, so let's add this thing. And only then it appears. Okay, so that actually works. That actually works surprisingly. Well, actually, not surprisingly. I don't know why I said surprisingly. Uh, all right. So let me let me now go ahead and see how we're gonna um, you know approach that. So essentially, we need to take the visible area and divide it by the entire area, and we get the proportion of the visible area to the entire area. So and let's maybe save it somewhere to here. <clears throat> And now we can effectively just multiply that proportion by the height of the uh, of the whole thing, and that would give us what we expect, believe it or not. Right, so that's basically it. Almost. It's not really, surprisingly. Huh. Uh -huh. So that kind of makes sense. Hmm. So scrollable area, so this is the height, so visible area, and visible area is what? Visible area is the boundary height, uh, an entire area is this thing. Uh -huh. So when this is relationship to the... That should be correct, so, but here it is not like this. Mm -hmm. Panel boundary height. Uh, so it's only when it's bigger. It could be also, when it's equal, we can just like not display it as well. Mm -hmm. Entire scrollable area. Minus visible area. So maximum scroll. Maximum scroll, by the way, should automatically prevent this specific overflow. Right. So it should prevent this specific overflow. So I do not quite understand. So this is the height of the whole thing. So the visible area, the entire scrollable area. Uh, and we just do that. Um, okay, so if this thing is bigger, only then we can just do that. I don't really know what's up with that. Why it goes down, why it goes down. Hmm. So maybe it has something to do with panel scroll. Oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. Panel scroll is offset within the entire scrolling area. So that means we have to map not only the height of this entire thing, but also the, the panel scroll, right? So let's actually introduce something like this. So the panel scroll, we also have to divide it by the entire scrollable area uh, and only then um, remap uh, this entire thing. Right, so we have to remap it back to the whole... Yeah, okay, so that makes sense. <laughs> uh, right, so it's only been one hour, but I'm already tired apparently. Okay, so, and as you can see, that, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, but uh, we also need to put... Um, I don't want to make it red, right? Obviously, right? Doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's see. So we can just use the color of the... Or the background. We can just like literally put background in here. Where is... Uh, where is red? So this is background. Mm -hmm. So let me see. So, and there we go. So that looks like a, uh, you know, scroll bar. Does it look like a scroll, a scroll bar? I think it does look like a scroll bar. 
All right, that's pretty cool. Um, so I don't really like the color of selection, right? So the selected color is just like like this. Can we make it something like blue, All right? So just make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Uh, actually, that looks nice. Uh, I wonder if I can color. Uh, brightness and just make it a little bit brighter I suppose it's relative to one so the bigger than one is gonna be uh, yeah it's too bright uh, so that means maybe we want to increase the brightness just slightly uh, where is my compilation thingy uh, yeah that's a little bit better all right all right all right all right so I really like that okay uh -huh. So uh, maybe I'm going to increase the padding of this entire stuff. Uh, where is the padding? So let's make it maybe one. I really don't like that. <sighs> there we go. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So it would be also nice to have like, a, you know, rounded corners or something like that. We can even try it right now. Who said we can't do that? Uh, we should be able to do that. Uh, let me let me see. So how do you do that? By the way, <laughs> draw rectangle, maybe pro. There should be something like pro. Uh, rectangle rounded. There we go. So draw rectangle rounded, and you just supply the roundness and segments. Okay. So draw rectangle. Okay. So we might as well, so we, we draw rectangle in all of the possible outcomes. We might as well just uh, extract the color, right? So we can just extract the color. And in this specific case, we just draw the specific color and here just assign it. So this is the color right? and this is the color. Uh -huh, like so and like so so that way it is easy to just modify this thing uh, like so so round it uh, we supply the roundness I have no idea what is what the hell is roundness uh, right because it's not documented anyway so <laughs> what is roundness uh, is it in what is that it's a not a rounded rectangle so it has to be from zero to one, so it's, it's better doc documented, but I mean, maybe it doesn't have to be documented because you're supposed to read the source code anyway, so... Um, right, so let's put it like two in here and 20 seconds, right, so this is going to be the color. Uh, and let me see... Uh, yeah, that looks not that bad, actually, that looks nice. Uh -huh. Okay, look at that. Uh, we might as well do the same thing for the for this step. Uh, right, so round it. Um, so was that zero two twenty? Okay. Uh, Dairy. Oh my God. Uh, zero two twenty. Okay. Uh, so now even the scroll bar. Well, I mean it's so small. It's it's difficult to see anyway. So we might as well just make four. Uh, does it does it make any difference? Can't see scheisse. Uh What about like eight? Um, can we see? Yeah, there we go. Look at that. It's removed one pixel from the corner, making it overall feel like it's uh, yeah, like it's rounded. So <laughs> look at that. Yeah, boy. Look at that interface. Look at that professional interface, holy scheisse! That's absolutely poggers. Um, so, I still don't like the fonts though. I still don't like the fonts. Uh, we should probably do something about that. Um, right, maybe set bilinear interpolation uh, when we load the fonts. Uh, so, for example, load the font. Right, so where do we load the font? We load it in here, uh, right, so, and that thing returns a font. Let's take a look at the definition of the font, and as you can see, it has a texture. So after loading the font, uh, we could have taken its texture 
and sort of like a set texture filter, right? So set texture filter, uh, like so. And what kind of filters do we have? A texture filter, uh, just set by linear interpolation, right? But th that will require restarting the whole thing, but maybe it's worth it. Let's see. Uh, right, so let me restart. So what do we have? Where is literally everything? Though it already looks horrendous, I already don't like how it looks like. Wait a second, I just... Uh, so... Does it look good? It's like... Very soapy. You know what I'm talking about? It doesn't look crisp at all. Um, I'm not sure if it's a good idea. Though... It make it look better, I think. I guess it's alright. Okay. Damn, that looks awesome. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yo. That is amazing, actually. Uh, that looks way better than when I started. <laughs> so you can kind of see the visualization like behind this thing uh, right so maybe maybe we'll also have to put some scissors in there we can actually do it right now why not um, so where do we do the FFT render FFT render so let's take something more calm I suppose uh, oh, this one. Okay. Is it too small? This is too small. Uh -huh. Alright, so... Uh, uh, tracks panel. So, do we have some to-dos? This is the phone scan out of the phone text. I'm still not sure about the SDF phone, so I'll have to think about that. Yeah. So yeah, I want you to do the scissors on FFT render. Mm, so where is the FFT render? So the preview boundary. Uh, begin uh, scissors. Yeah, so the fact that you can't do scissors in a nested way is kind of an oversight. But at the same time, it's probably very performance heavy. In the sense that like it flushes the render, so that's probably why it is not nested, because you probably don't want to do that very often. Yeah, and you can't avoid flushing it, because it's a batch render. Yeah, we'll see. Um, right, so preview boundary x, preview boundary y, uh, preview boundary width, uh, preview boundary height. Uh, there we go. So, and here we can end scissor mode, like so. Uh, there we go. So, uh, now it actually cuts out that part. So, as you can see, you can clearly see that it cuts it out. So, it looks a little bit better now. So, they don't overlap that much. Uh, Alright, so, to be fair, this is not a particularly long session. So, it's like one hour. But I already kind of did everything I wanted to do with UI. Um, right, so I'll think about the rest of the things, how to implement them and probably do them off-screen. So, yeah, that's a pretty good UI to move forward with. Yeah. So, we also need a, an ability to delete things and stuff like that, I will be on that later. Um, Alright, so, that's pretty cool. That's it for the day. Thanks everyone who's watching right now, I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreational programming session with Azuzin. I love you all. Mwah.